Hello and thank you for tuning in to another episode of Coffee Break by ClowmanAlbris.com. My name is Dan Holliday and today in this episode I'm going to talk to you a little bit about something that happened in a previous video that we released on, on ClimbingAlbris.com on our YouTube channel and it was the Monster Cottonwoods video. So if you haven't seen the video go and check it out after you've, after you've listened to this episode and you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, so in the video maybe about halfway through, I get up to a point and uh, my colleague Connor had previously climbed that tree earlier in the day and basically there was a huge top, probably, it was probably about another 40, 50 foot up above this huge section of decay where a previous, like a previous part of the top had completely split out and it must have torn down the stem and it left open this huge like 10 foot uh, kind of open cavity and at one part in the cavity you could actually see daylight all the way through um, and there was like reaction growth up both sides of the stem but the the like entire of one side was just decayed wood completely you know a complete huge cavity and and we had to take the like the top of the tree down uh, and it was like for hazard mitigation and what it meant was there was a fence on the back side so kind of three sides of the tree we could just knock stuff out and we didn't really have to worry about what it landed on there was just you know lower you know kind of forest canopy growth below so it didn't really matter but the, on on the north side of the tree there was like a christmas tree farm and there was like a brand new fence that had been built and then there was the house of that christmas tree farm not too far away which is why my client wanted to bring these these cottonwoods tree trees down just to just for peace of mind because he felt like you know, they were old and cottonwoods are just renowned for losing huge limbs during heavy heavy windstorms. And my client just wasn't comfortable having these trees there. And he didn't know how bad these trees were high up in the canopy. Obviously, he hadn't seen these huge cavities because he wasn't, wasn't able to get the visuals on them. But anyway, when I got up there and saw the size of the cavity... Um, it was at, I mean, cottonwoods for starters, they're, they're weak trees, you know, the branches snap easily. Um, they're just not known for being good, solid trees. Like I would definitely not want to rope into something, you know, it's small in size, whereas I would be happy to do that on an oak or a cherry or like one of those kind of species. But when it comes to cottonwoods, I always want to rope into something solid something a good size um but in this specific situation i needed it to climb higher because i couldn't really couldn't really fell that that whole top um and i couldn't well i couldn't fell it below that cavity there was just too much weight on the back side to kind of risk it and i didn't I didn't know if the wood was going to be completely solid so that the hinge would hold and all that kind of stuff. And I just, I couldn't fell it below that cavity. So I, I had to climb higher. Now, luckily I was, there was, we were doing an, another cottonwood tree, similar kind of size, actually a little bit taller. That was maybe the canopies were maybe 20, 30 feet apart. And I'd been in the larger tree um like in the morning so i i left my rope in there and i used that as like um like as main tying point backup tying point that kind of thing i descended up the tree with the big rotten section in it when i got to that section realized i needed to climb higher but i was very nervous very uncomfortable you know i i stayed there for a while i uh, entertained kind of lots of different options ran through all the different options in my head um, and then landed on basically the one that I felt was the best option for me which was to climb higher 
so that I could take some weight off the backside so that we could then fell out the entire top um, in the direction knowing full well that it was going to go when I'd removed the weight off the backside. But I was not prepared to fell the top with the weight still on the backside because who like it could have gone anywhere and it could have completely like collapsed it could have come on top of me it would have likely gone on top of the new fence and all like and this is an expensive fence it's not just you know a couple of panels that could have been replaced so yeah i needed to climb up there but i was not prepared to be solely attached to that tree because i was i felt there was a possibility that this thing could collapse while I'm on it, just because of the species of tree and the size of the cavity. It was, uh, it was nerve wracking. So I was tied into the, tied into the neighboring tree, but that neighboring tree, you know, it didn't give me a good time point for like work positioning and I, and ascending up the stem it was kind of you know it's quite far away and so it's pulling me over that way so that was basically my life that was my lifeline if i took a fall i was just going to swing you know 30 40 feet across but that was the worst thing that was going to happen but i needed to ascend up the main stem of the rotten tree so what i decided to do was rather than how rather than connect so I had my climbing system, but rather than connect the life support carabiner, you know, that's rated the one I was using, I think it was probably 25 kilonewtons, rock exotica one, um, could have been 23 kilonewtons. I have a couple of different, different shaped ones, but anyway, 23 kilonewtons and that's minimum brake strength, huge amount of force to break that. Um, and if that top failed, I did not want that top ripping me in half or breaking my back um or that whole top hanging on my 23 kilonewton carabiner and you know being pulled in different directions uh, that was that was worst case scenario uh as well as you know being actually catapulted out of the tree if something failed in my climbing system so i didn't want that to happen so for me the best thing that I could think to do was use and let me get one to show you was use one of these DMM XSRE carabiners now obviously that's an accessory carabiner um, but it's rated at four kilonewtons so four kilonewtons is about 400 kilograms of braking strength and that like that is minimum braking strength so who knows how much more force it would take to to break that but four kilonewtons is much more preferable in that situation than 24 kilonewtons for example um now for me to make that call that's that's me using a lot of experience um using knowledge of species of tree knowledge of cavities decays things that i've seen jobs that i've done this this what i'm talking to you shouldn't even be uh considered you shouldn't even be doing this kind of a tree if you're if you're an inexperienced tree climber this when these opportunities present themselves or when these scenarios present themselves this should be way down the, your career path um, and if it's not then either you need to reevaluate you need to you need to speak to whoever has has put you on that job uh, maybe you need to speak to a crew foreman maybe nobody knew and then you get into a canopy and you realize it's you know this thing is way outside my comfort zone and speak to people this is not something that you need to be thinking of on the fly when you've never done it before, just hoping that it'll work if you don't have the full understanding of why you're doing it. Now, for me, I had gone through all the different scenarios that I could have done in that tree and came and 
this scenario using this little carabiner to attach my rope back to my harness with was the best option in that situation for me. It was the best option because I knew that I was attached to another tree that was going to be safe and I was going to take a swing worst case scenario um, if this failed. So why I chose this is one, it's definitely got plenty of strength knowing that as I'm climbing up this tree, using this on my climbing system to act, to ascend this tree, um, this isn't going to break with just my my body weight on it, because my this is like five times my body weight probably that it'll break, maybe even more than that. Um, but if something were to to snap and the whole top fall and that impact on this, you know, I'm hoping this is just going to this is going to peel out now here here's the key to to what i did um or the key well a key piece of information is i haven't i've never tested this to to breaking point to failure i've never been in a tree and used one to failure i never hope to never wish to never want never want a top to fail on me while, while i'm attached to it this is like last case scenario um but you know i can't say for certain that that top was gonna was gonna break the dmm carabiner um i would hope it would and i wanted it to if it failed so that it keeps me safe it keeps me getting from getting torn apart or it keeps my harness from getting torn or my back getting broken or me being ripped out the tree or catapulted a few hundred feet um but I needed to use something of this strength to have the, for me to have the comfort in knowing that I could climb on it without having to think, oh God, this is this going to break? Is this going to break? Like if I were to use a different type of accessory carabiner, I don't know if, you know, if that's got enough strength to hold my body weight. But I know that this is rated at four kilonewtons. So I know that I can climb on this and... It's not just going to, I'm not just going to fall out of the tree unexpectedly. Um, but if the unexpected happened, like the tree, the top failure, I would hope the weight of that top and the force and the momentum of that top falling and dropping into my system it would, you know, would peel this out. So that is the reason why I've done it. Um... I got I got a lot of comments on the video, the Cottonwood video, saying, you know, people would have done the same. Um if you like if people have been in that scenario and they and they're experienced and they know about these carabiners, then you may have done that yourself in the past. Um inexperienced people may have not had any idea why I was doing it. So that's why I'm making this video to explain a little bit more in detail. Some people uh, said it was a stupid idea and you're entitled to your opinion like like I said the these are the reasons why I made that decision and I've I've kind of explained why I did it I would do the exact same thing again I would hope it, it would never come to failing to find out if it if it split open and, and failed on me um, but you know I could should I have walked away from the job there's that that is a possibility i i could have made that decision to say no i don't want to do this um so that was another that's another option um yeah we you know i i live to tell the tale so i'm i'm extremely thankful for that and i'm sure my family and friends are um i'm i i lived to kind of talk the story through without showing you a broken carabiner that had, that had failed because that would have been absolutely terrifying so what i would say is it's a if ever you you're in a situation and it's nerve-wracking and uh, you know just sit there and consider all your options don't please don't be time pressured um i know from experience that 
in some circumstances, time pressures have made me make stupid decisions in the past, have made me not sit and consider all the options because I'm so desperate to get on with with the job at hand and I'm so desperate to complete it on time uh, and some of those decisions have been wrong and now I feel like I'm much more experienced, much more knowledgeable, more confident, uh, have a lot more techniques in my you know mental toolbox so I think all that combined makes me um, a much safer arborist than I feel like I am today but I have certainly done things in the past that you know uh, that I would never do again and that are questionable questionable um, so I hope you kind of enjoy and understood this video and enjoyed the explanation of why I did what I did and and maybe you learn a little bit from my decision making and maybe you'll take that and and keep that as ideas and thoughts for, for future jobs that you may come across. So once again, thank you very much for, for listening to me and listening to, to my explanation of using the DMM XSRE carabiner as a, as a climbing carabiner for, for a scary job when I had another life support system in place. So thanks very much for watching. Much appreciated. See you on the next one.